Hi everybody, Jeremy here from VJT Studio and today I'm going to share with you how to do the text particle effect in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now we're on the edit page and we're going to start by bringing a new Fusion composition in our timeline. Then we're going to move over to Fusion. Once in Fusion, the first thing I want to do is bring a new background and I'm going to link the output of that background to the media out. Then I'm going to reduce the alpha channel down to zero so we gain transparency. Now I'm going to bring a text node in my working area, but I'm not going to link it right away to the background because we're going to use an instance text later on. I'm just going to bring it here to the viewer by clicking that button right here to drag it into the viewer. And here we're going to write DaVinci. I'm going to change the font for Montserrat and increase the size. Then we're going to bring a particle emitter in all working area. And then we're going to click here on the particle render. Then here, the first thing I want to do with the particle emitter is going right there to region and we're going to switch from a sphere to bitmap, which enable here the possibility to connect our text to the particle emitter with this yellow arrow. Now we're not going to merge that directly. We're going to use a dissolve node instead to merge it because we're going to put an animation on the dissolve node. So here I'm going to do shift space to prompt open the select tool window and we're going to search for dissolve and I'm going to bring the dissolve node in. Then I'm simply going to unconnect my background from my media out and connect it to the yellow arrow of the dissolve. And then I'm going to connect the output of the dissolve to the media out. And then I'm going to connect the particle render to the dissolve through the green arrow. Now let's just bring our media out to the viewer so we can see what we're doing. And here, as of right now, there is not much on screen. You can see only a few dots. We're going to need to increase here the amount of particle. If we go to the particle emitter and we go over to control, as you can see here, we have only 10 particle. We want to increase that by a lot. So here I'm going to go with 2000. And as you can see, we don't have 10 particle anymore, but 2000. And that's just filling up our entire text. That is using the shape of our text to just populate the particle in the right place. Now we're going to create an instance text. So here I'm going to copy my text and I'm going to right click and paste instance. Now I'm going to link the output of that instance text to the background one to merge it with the overall composition. And now basically we're of dissolve, we're going to be able to switch between the solid text and the particle text and switching between the two going to allow us to create our animation out. So here we're going to keyframe that on the dissolve. So I'm going to go at frame 50. And then here I'm going to drop a keyframe on the background foreground at one. And then we're going to go to frame 40 and then we're going to bring that down to zero. So now we basically created a transition between the solid text to the particle text. Now we want to make some modification to the particle text to make the particle move away. To do that here, I'm going to select my P render, dissolve and media out. I'm just going to make some space and we're going to bring a second background after the particle emitter. We're going to hit shift space and we're going to search for turbulence. And here we're going to bring the particle turbulence in. And as you can see, just create some movement to our particles. But the only issue is that here, when we're transitioning between the two with the dissolve, is that the particle are already moving. So it's not very, very fluid. We want them to start only when the transition here with the dissolve is done. So to do that, we're going to go over to condition. And here we're going to keyframe the probability. So when it's at zero, it's not moving. And when it's at one, it's moving. So we're basically going to keyframe that on frame 40 being at zero keyframe and then we're going to go to frame 50 and bring that up to one and now if we play it we're getting somewhere we got that transition happening and then we get the movement of the particle now we just want to find us a few things first i want to find us the transition here with the opacity i want to have some softness on the edges of the text to make it feel a bit more natural and then we're going to need to just move the particle away out of the screen so first let's just keyframe something on the instance text for the softness so we're going to select an instance text going to shading and then here we're going to scroll down to softness open that we're going to right click on the x the instance right click on the y the instance and then here i'm going to go to frame 40 drop a keyframe on the x and the y and then we're going to go to frame 50 and here we're going to adjust the x at 10 and the y at 10. it's not a lot but it helps to make the transition a bit smoother right there 
Now we're going to blow away the particle. To do that, we're going to use another node by selecting the P turbulence. It shifts based on our keyboard and we're going to bring a directional force. So here we're going to bring directional force. Right now, as you can see, the direction by default is minus 90, but we can move that direction around. So in our case, we're just going to move that to the right. So I think an angle that could be nice here will be about 20. So we will basically blow out the particle to the right side upper corner. Now, similar to the issue that we had with the P turbulence prior, as you can see here, when the transition is happening, this take effect uh, before it. So that doesn't look very good. We want the strength to just increase the same way as everything else. So we're gonna keyframe the strength as well. We're gonna go to frame 50, drop a keyframe on the strength at 0.1, and then we're gonna go to frame 40, and then we're gonna bring the strength down to zero. And let's start to move the particle only when we're done with the dissolved transition. The only issue is that here, as you can see, the particle emitter is still emitting particle even though the text has been blown away. To change that, we're gonna need to use a mask and keyframe that mask. So here we're gonna select our text and then we're gonna bring a rectangular mask. We're gonna create a box around our text like so. Here, I'm just gonna increase a bit the soft edges and we're gonna keyframe the position of that mask from 40 right here put a keyframe on the position of the mask and then go to frame 60 and we're going to move the center to to basically out of the frame to the right side and as you can see it basically got rid of the particle that we didn't want to be produced and now if we play it we basically get all particle text now there is a bunch of other things that could be done to try to enhance that overall as of right now we can still read the da vinci when it gets blown away if you really want to make it look like it got completely dissolved by the particle you can here go to p turbulence control and make some adjustment to the x y and z strengths so here if we increase that and then we increase the density we basically gonna deform that text. So you can just basically play around with those parameters until you get something that you like. And then if you play it right now, that's already way different than what we had at the beginning. Now another tip for the look of the particle, right now it's just basically some white dot, but you could choose between a different type of look. If you go over to the P emitter and then you go over to style and here you switch from point to brush, you will get basically the similar tool as you get in uh, the paint node with the brush. So here you have a different icon that you could select it from. For example, one that could be nice is flake to get a snowflake. And now your particles are basically snowflakes, so it could be very, very interesting to do uh, depending on the effect that you try to achieve. Uh, and you have basically a bunch of different possibilities that you can choose from here. The flakes and the leaf seems to be the most interested to me. One last thing about the style brush is that here, as you can see, we cannot really clearly see the flakes because we have a lot of particles. So we can always increase the size of the individual particles and reduce the total amount. So here, instead of having 2000, for example, we could have only only 200 and go back to style here in size control we could just increase the size of those snowflakes so we can identify them a little bit more a good example here will be uh, the brush bubble if it were to the default size as you can see it's just like some blue dot but if we start to increase the size we can start to see actually uh, the shape of the bubble but yeah basically give it a go and it can just be a nice way to stylize your particles Another tip, if you don't want your text and particles to be white, but if you want to apply a gradient, that will not automatically be linked. You need to do something about that. So here I'm just going to go back to point, and then here I'm going to go back to control, and here in the color parameter, I'm going to switch to use color from a region. And now I'm basically able to pull out the color from the text. Before that, if you wanted to change the color, you will have to go over to style, and then here make some adjustment into the color control. But you wouldn't be able to create a gradient directly from there so that would be better to just link that as i show you right here and then go to text then shading and then here you could create your gradient from the text uh, node select the colors that you want and at the particle limiter we'll basically pull out the same color as the text now we're pretty much done, but I'm just gonna make a quick animation in to bring that text. I'm gonna make a position animation with the text getting outside of a mask. 
But just so you know, don't keyframe the position directly on the instance text or the text, because otherwise that's gonna mess up with the particle position. So do that on a transform node. So here I'm gonna select my instance text, it's shift space on my keyboard, bring a transform node, and then here I'm gonna bring a rectangular mask and link the output of that mask to the merge too. Now we're just gonna stretch that mask to make some space here for our text. And we're gonna increase the soft edge just to have something that's gonna be a bit smoother on the edges. Now let's go to transform. Then here we're gonna go to frame 25, drop a keyframe here on the position. And then we're gonna go to frame zero and we're gonna drag the text outside of the mask like so. Then here we're going to smooth out that animation by going over to the spline editor to be able to see quickly what we're doing we're going to go over here to menu and show only selected tool make sure that you have to transform selected and that's the only one that's going to show up here in the spline then just select it click zoom to fit select your two keyframe point it s on your keyboard then hit t to bring the easy and ease out and increase the easy in to about 85. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. And see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoditorstudio.com.